just as a sort of summary uh, yesterday we talked about how uh, to make a good presentation we we started talking about it we sort of are in the half phase stage we have most stuff to cover we learned that there are three major uh, important points major aspects of a presentation of any good presentation which are the message of the story which is the content of your presentation the slides the visuals which is how you present it and the delivery part which, which is how you you know you as person how you present it uh, with the data with the aid of the data and the points that you want to make and the visuals in the slides that you have at hand so these are the three major aspects we are, co we are covering the uh, aspect of uh, message of story yesterday and we're still there we uh, learned that researching is the most important part of any presentation before you go up and deliver it you need to have stuff solid stuff with you and that's where research comes in and we need we also learn that uh, researching is important uh, to to make sure that uh, you get the right data you need to make sure that you look into the right places and that you get uh, the data from valid legitimate sources and uh, not from not from uh, shady sources so that's also what we learned yesterday uh we must make sure also that uh when we're researching we sort of take notes make an outline of it make a rough draft and come can uh, sort of arrive at a script for your presentation because scripts always help and it, it helps tide away your awkward silences and uh, and it helps to carry you over even if um, you know there's there's that blank out moment where you forget what you say so a script help a, a script helps even if uh, you know your person you are confident without scripts that's fine it's not a mandatory thing but it's a sort of you know it's a sort of thing to fall back on just in case you stammer or stutter so that's um, another aspect that we mentioned yesterday and we mentioned different scripting strategies one is the prep method the position response uh, position reason example method example position method the prep method that is ideal for you know stating a strong position that you have on a debatable topic on something that you know there may be different positions you give a position then you reason it out and then you give an example for it and then you restate your position that's one way of going about it another way of going about it could be the past present future method whereby you are addressing a problem or a situation chronologically you set the context you say what happened in the past and then you go on to say what's happening right now how is the current state and then you go on to the future and say uh, what what are the prospects for the future what are the recommendations that you can give you as the presenter can give for the you know the future and uh, things of like that that's sort of you know also helpful in business presentations and policy presentations and we also learned about the um, problem cause solution method which we uh, already talked about and which we uh, identified as the one that's most used in uh, most class conference uh, business size business presentations because it's a, a very logical structure to it it has got a logical structure to it because you identify a problem then you find out what are the causes for it and then you uh, try to come up with a solution for it and you present it that's the sort of basic outline that you're going within the problem cause solution method the pcs method so these are the three that we have covered until now we are now going to cover the uh, attention interest desire action method the aida method as we have already mentioned at the beginning of the last session, this is not an exhaustive list, and it's not that you must make you must uh, use only one form of a presentation structuring to do your presentation. It's it's completely up to you. If uh, it, it sort of depends on your needs, it depends on what you are going for. So uh, just keep all of that in mind. We'll uh, start with today's session as we have you know sort of done with the summary of yesterday's session so yeah we'll be covering we'll start with the covering of the aida method today which is still part of the message or the story or the content part of the presentation we'll go on to the slides of visuals later and and the delivery part afterwards we'll also have a bit of uh, recapping in between so that you remember what we have already covered and what we'll be you know going to cover and how something leads up to something else so the AIDA method. Yeah, the AIDA method, the attention, interest, desire, action method. 
is ideal for persuasive presentations. Uh, what do you think persuasion is? What is the meaning of the word persuasion? Anybody? You can either use the chat box or you can just raise your hands or you can talk directly. No one? All right. Persuasion is when you uh, persuade someone, of course, to it's the noun for the verb uh, persuade. And persuasion means you, you know, give someone some valid reason to uh, to believe in something that you believe in or to to pitch for something that you um, think is relevant. So you successfully trying to sort of convince somebody to agree to or to to accept or sort of or do something that um, and you use usually uh, for that particular reason you use reasoning or verbal influence or other sort of influence and all that so you convince people basically the idea is to convince people for doing something that you want them to do or saying something that you want them to do or buying something that you want them to buy uh, so that's the uh, idea of persuasion so you're persuading people in uh, persuading comes in all sorts of forms for so example an advertisement is a persuasion it's 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 trying to persuade you to buy something or um, you know watch a particular movie for example if you're a, a trailer a movie trailer is a persuasion persuasive product and uh, so for persuasive presentations the aida method is ideal because it calls attention to itself it sparks an interest in the consumer or the audience or whoever is watching or whoever is attending attending the presentation it sparks an in, it's it sparks an intense desire in the audience and then it, it it's also ends with the call to action which is the sort of structure of the idea method so it's generally used in sales pitches product launches ads or even just uh, you know general persuasion if you're you know in the, some sort of general persuasive situation in a particular classroom situation for example you want someone to fill a google form that you want uh, for a particular research that you're doing and that's sort of persuasive persuasive uh, um, nature of a presentation that that also works with the AID method. So an example to sort of you know recap, we were doing this example all through for the four methods. That a hospital is launching CRISPR treatment for gene, germline gene editing treatment and wants to encourage patients to try. This is one sort of a situation where you can use the AID method. Or another situation is where you have an advertisement for a spell checker. We'll we'll go into the advertisement part. Uh, we'll we'll show that example. Uh, not we'll not show that example. We'll 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 speak about that example soon. But before that, we'll just recap what is attention, interest, desire, action method. It is basically you present something, grab the audience's attention, and then you spark an interest in them, and then you transform that interest into desire, a stronger interest, and then you're calling them to action. You're asking them to do something uh, by way of your presentation. So that's the AIDA method. And we'll look at an example of the AID method here. So the attention part for the grammar, for the spell checker ad. So you would have all seen, if you don't have an ad block in your YouTube, you would have seen um, the Grammarly ads before videos. And Grammarly is a spell checker, grammar checker uh, app and extension, a software and also an extension. And uh, it's, a, it's a considerably, uh, you know, well-made app it can detect a lot of errors and it can also help you construct your sentences easily so that's the uh, the attention grabbing part of their ad this is sort of sequence of their ad and it goes like this so the attention grabbing part is writing is not that easy but grammarly can help it's a very simple proposition but very universal uh, we all know that writing is not easy and we all have our issues with you know grammar especially with english for example because we um, you know, for a lot of us, it wouldn't, wouldn't be the first language. So uh, the proposition is very uh, deceptively simple, but it's also very powerful in that it says writing is not that easy, but Grammarly can help. And then it goes to um, convert their attention into interest, to spark an interest in the audience. And it shows a sentence in the ad, in the small 30 second YouTube ad that you see. Uh, this sentence is grammatically correct, uh, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. 
so this is i mean they show some random sentence in the in the um, in the advertisement in the visual and they say how the uh, sentence is grammatically correct but it's wordy and it's hard to read and it undermines the writer's message in the word choices bland they uh, you know now what they're doing is they're making the attention part become a stronger thing becoming making it an interest because they are not just saying writing they they are not just saying the you know the abstract statement of writing is easy is not that not easy and grammarly can help they are also saying they are also calling your attention to a specific instance of a sentence being grammatically correct but being wordy and hard to read and saying how it undermines writers message and the word choice being bland and then it converts that you know that interest to desire and the desire is that and it sort of, sort of shows how why and how grammarly is influential here what can it do to help it says grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling understandable writing that makes an impact on your reader much better so the much better part comes after of course that particular sentence that we we that is shown in the previous part is being corrected by grammarly suggestions and uh, then of course that sentence becomes much better and then it's a call, sort of call to action they're asking you to are you ready to give it a try installation is simple and free visit grammarly.com today so that's the call to action that they are asking you as in any other advertisement they are asking you to give uh, the extension the browser extension or the software a try which is grammarly and this is a very 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 basic structure very simple structure of the ai da method the attention interest desire action method and uh, you can see this in most advertisements probably not in, not exactly in this order not uh you know they may some sometimes jump directly into sparking the desire and uh, you know sparking the interest part and uh, all of that but this is the sort of basic idea of most advertisements or most business pitches and so on so that's the idea method and i think we can take a sort of small recap quiz of the methods here so yeah the yeah look look at the questions here you are asked to give a presentation on whether working remotely is a better option for both employers and employees going forward in the pandemic which of the following modes of writing your script will you opt for a the prep method b the problem cause solution method c the ai da method and d the past present future method uh what do you think do any anybody can anybody can answer you can either write in uh, write in the chat box or you can uh, tell me directly after raising your hands yeah prajuli it says prep uh, why do you think it's prep prajuli yeah yeah i think uh... First, uh, we have to take a position that we favor it or against it, mm -hmm. and then we have to tell our reason that why we are in favor or against it, and say then we have to put some examples or some articles from newspaper or some uh, reliable sources as example, and mm -hmm. then we have to lastly strong uh, strongly present our position so i think prep is a good method for this yeah absolutely absolutely yeah prep is uh, probably is right prep is you know in this particular question in this particular situation prep the prep method the position reason example position method would be the the most ideal way to go about it because it is asking you to take a position it is asking you to take a considered stand in a debatable position in a sort of contentious issue if if you say so uh, the prep method is the i think the most ideal option here you can also i mean if if the, for example the question is uh, sort of put in a different way you can use uh, uh, different methods for example if if you if someone is asking about the nature of work over the years for example you can probably use the past present future method because it it's asking you to give a chronological order and it's a uh, sort of nature and prospects or future prospects of work and then you can talk about the future prospects of the work and then you can use the past present future method of scripting but here it's mostly asking you to take a position and uh, sort of stand by that position explain that position and explicate that position for your audience and then the prep method is the ideal method uh, another question 
so you are the head of sponsorships for the annual college fest and one of your biggest sponsors has backed out last minute and now we you find yourself short of funds which of the following modes of presentation would you opt for when you want to convene a meeting with your team members to resolve this the prep method the problem cause solution method the aida method and the past present future method which one do you think please answer chat box so you can you know answer directly any of you yeah i think problem pass solution method according to me yeah why do you think so because yeah, we have a yes a problem that uh, our sponsor sponsor backed out last minute mm -hmm. so this is a problem and mm -hmm. uh, what is the cause for this uh, yeah we have to uh, so what uh, it uh, problem we have to face uh, due to which and what causes we have to face due to which and uh, due to this and uh, what uh, are the solutions what are the possible solutions we have yeah yeah Okay, that's uh, that's uh, probably the answer. Anyone else have a different answer or something else to add? If you're not uh, saying, I'd have to call out names. Anyone except Rajuli, of course. Uh, anybody has a different answer? Nobody. Okay, so uh, I, I'd go with what Rajvith has said, and that's a, it's a very sensible answer. Why I would say it's a very sensible answer is because in such a situation, uh, if you read the question, most of the people would you know easily go for the AIDA method because you know it's the uh, the persuasive method. You you know you, there's no there's no there's a shortage of funds and uh, you know the sponsors are not there. You have to get sponsors and so on and so forth. But the AIDA method works when you're pitching it for sponsors. But here the question asks you to uh, convene a meeting with your team members and give a presentation. Here the problem cause solution method works because you already know all of you, you, you already know each other. All, all your team members know you, you know your team members. And you're uh, not asking your team members to be sponsors. Of course, that need need not be the case. I mean, that definitely is not the case because you you don't want your team members to um, sponsor for your uh, for the annual college fest. And uh, you're basically addressing a problem here. And that's why the um, that's why Prajali's answer is absolutely right. It's a uh, you know problem. Uh, you find the problem which is which you already have here, and then you you know find the cause and the solution for it. And uh, you can, you know, arrive at, uh, hopefully arrive at a solution through deliberation or through your own ideas. You can sort of pitch a solution. But on the other hand, if the question was asking, uh, if, if you, you are pitching to new sponsors, you, to get new sponsors, for example, then this is a different, uh, different ball game altogether. Then probably you, you know, more easily use the AI DA method and, you know, persuade them to sponsor you. So that's the, um, that's one of the other methods that here and the recap we'll do and i think one more question yeah you've been asked to give a presentation on the evolution of telecommunication sector in india which of the following modes of presentation would you opt for again the four methods the prep the problem cost solution the ada and the past present future which one do you think You'd go for the uh, the past, present, future method, right? Because you, you know, it's it's sort of asking you to give a chronological picture, a sort of over time, sort of um, you know, across time picture of the telecommunication sector's evolution in in Indian context, and that's when you uh, it's always best to use the uh, past, present, future method, which which gives a wholesome picture, which uh, sets the context, talks talks to you about the past, and then tells you what the current situation is how it's going and then it, then then you also say about future prospects what what lies in store ahead of you 
ahead of ahead of the particular topic here which is the telecommunication sector in india so these are sort of the methods and yeah this is a recap quiz that we did we can do us you can also watch a small video here Um, are you all able to watch this? I are you all able to hear this? No. Why you can't hear this? Can you? No, voice is not audible. It's not audible? No. Okay, uh, then I think we'll, we'll uh, skip that. It's okay. Oh, wait. I think, I'm sorry, just, just a second. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, is it is it audible now? Is it audible? No. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, then forget it. I'll, I'll skip that. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll go back to the uh, the presentation part. That that is just an example presentation that I was trying to show you, but clearly it's not audible. So we'll, we'll skip that part. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll go to the slides. So the slides or the visuals uh, aren't a sort of an essential part of you know your presentation. You can or um, you can or um, you know you can skip it if you want to. It's 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 not the most important part of your presentation. If if you think it's not necessary, you can leave it out and you can just uh, you know speak from your from your mind or from your notes or whatever but the slides are a good backup to have because just in case you you know don't remember stuff or just in case you you know you have a fear that you won't cover everything that you want to cover uh, it's ideal to keep it there and also to have a visual aid to say whatever you're saying is always good so that the the audience stays with you because the visual is is easily communicable and uh, that means that the audience will more likely stay with you a bit more. So the, the slides are important and the slides are helpful. Um, slides and visuals, of, of course. And yeah, and how do one design impactful slides? So I have a spoiler alert to give you here is that you don't have to be a great designer. You don't need to be some sort of, uh, you know, some artistic magician, artistic maestro to design impactful good slides. The sort of basic ground rule of creating a good slide deck is to see what slide, what kinds of slides there are and how necessary they are for your purpose or how not necessary they are for your, your purpose and you know taking them if taking them as they come and sort of leaving it out or leaving it in. So the idea is that to be very uh, you know very concise and very minimal with your slides. So firstly, there's a cover slide. Of course, the cover slide that we saw here was the uh, the title plus identifier or part of image if needed. And that's the sort of mandatory mandatory slide. It's It tells you what you're going to talk, talk about. It tells the audience what you're going to talk about. And then there's an overview slide 
that's also sort of indicates what the presentation objectives are. Did we have an overview slide here? Do you think? Yeah, so we did have an overview slide and that overview slide was, uh, you know, the slide which tells you what, what all we had to talk about. That I think we can go to the beginning and see, yeah, this was the overview slide. This is the, of course, the title slide that's necessary. This is the overview slide where we sort of gave the session overview. And then we also had, um, so these are, yeah, this is the section header style, uh, section header slide. The sort of different sections would be uh, given a separate header or different title here, which helps you to demarcate between different sessions and let lets the audience know what you're talking about. That's also good to have the slides that uh, section header slide. Yeah, and then the textual slides, of course, as as if, if they are important, if they you you can use it. Uh, and within the textual slide, always remember that this, the phones that you use should be legible and they should be, uh, there should be minimal amount of text. A lot of text is never a good idea. So it's always better to, you know, sort of uh, be a bit uh, conservative with, your, with, with the amount of text in your slides. It's always better to keep uh, the, num the amount of text in your slide to the bare minimum, the most important part, uh, the most important. And also visual slides, if you have um, you know pictures to show, then again, these are as needed. Textual slide and visual slide are as needed. If you need it, you use it. Uh, and but, but then make sure that you only use relevant pictures. You only use important uh, you know pictures that make sense for what you are saying, not, not random pictures or stuff. Also charts and graph, again, as needed. Uh, it's always bet if good to use charts and graphs if they help you in uh, visualizing data and telling a visual story uh, rather than you have to, having to say out all these random numbers and you know uh, reports and status reports and so on it's, it's always better if you have a you know a, an easy uh, graph or chart you don't need to put out complex line graphs or um, you know scattered out graphs or whatever you, you can use simpler stuff like pie charts for example if if it helps if it helps to convey the data more more efficiently and more without you having to explain it a lot then you can use those charts and graphs. It, it helps in visualizing data, of course. And then section header slide. As I've said, this one was a section header slide, the one on slides. Yeah, this is a section header slide. And uh, of course, summary slide. Again, summary slide helps you to sort of give a um, call for action. Also sort of go, sort of switches back to what the key message was. What are you have been talking through all of your presentation? That again is necessary, ideally. Then also you can use a thank you slide, which uh, indicates conclusion. And in the thank you slide, you can also, you know, uh, ask your audience to uh, to to let you know if they have any more questions um, that they can ask you those questions. And that's a, these, this is sort of the basic idea of creating a good slide deck. Uh, you can use this. Of course, I'll send you these PowerPoints after the sessions. Uh, so you can have a look at these and for templates for slide templates you can use go to these websites you would uh, most of you would already be familiar with these websites if you're not you can sort of just uh, take a look at these places prezi.com is one presentation creating uh, creation platform slides go is another you know presentation creation platform you'd have slides there google slides is another you have templates there slides carnival is there Oh, you can just go back to familiar territory and simply opt for Microsoft PowerPoint. They have plenty of templates themselves. Uh, you know, very simple stuff, but always remember to opt for simple stuff. And, uh, you know, if, especially in impactful presentations, it's all that your text should be what, or your content is what should be speaking, not your slides. They shouldn't be a splash of colors and, um, you know, a splash of colors and a lot of text and a lot of stuff. It's, it's always your idea that's more important. So yeah, when it comes to images and the general formatting of your slides. So when you use images, use only from Creative Commons. If you're using images from, you know, not from Creative Commons, make sure that you always cite them because there are copyright issues involved. You don't want to end up in jail. Not that all of your presentations would be looked up by different people and not that people would see it always, but it's always better to be on the legal side of things. 
when you're using images, it's ideal to use it from uh, Creative Commons or, if, or rather sort of free to use places. If you're not using it from those places, you it's ideal to you know cite them. Uh, you can use also use graphics and smart art option, of, especially in um, the Microsoft PowerPoint application, because it helps in conveying data more effectively, conveying your points more effectively, more visually, and that uh, makes you you know save time because you know time is of the essence, as I've been repeatedly emphasizing. Time is most important. So if if you can speak less and your your slides or your you know the your, your smart art will do a bit more legwork for you, then it's it's ideal for you. And yeah, make sure that you use the same font combination across all slides because it's the uniformity is good for the for the for the audience. It won't distract them because if you are using different fonts in different places, it, it it's not ideal. And sort of an ideal combination, a great combination would be sans serif fonts plus serif fonts. You all know what sensitive and serif fonts are, I hope. Do you? Does anybody want to tell me what sensitive yes. and serif fonts are? Yeah, sure, please. Yeah. Anyone telling me? So the fonts I have used here, it's mostly, so I have, I have actually not uh, abated by that rule myself. I've used all serif fonts, which is, this is, this is Cambria, I think. And I've used all serif fonts. Serif basically means that little, that little sort of tail on the, you know, the end of the letters. And it, it makes sure that one letter sort of leads into another letter that sort of small tails or small uh, small of small sort of hooks that each letter has each alphabet has that's uh, serif fonts well sans serif fonts don't have such such uh, tails or such hooks it's just uh, normal you know uh, more plain more you know used in children's books and stuff um, are serif uh, sans serif fonts so sans uh, sans means without in french and sans serif means basically without that tail serif is that tail or that hook so sans serif for titles and serif for the text is ideal because serif reads better in uh, smaller fonts and sans serif reads better for titles so you can use that combination then yeah, try to not use fonts that look too informal. That's extremely important, especially you are, especially if you're using, you know, doing a presentation in a very serious setting. Never use something like Comic Sans. It's 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 not ideal. It's not advisable at all because it sort of takes away from the seriousness of your content. Unless it's such a context where you can, for example, I don't know, you are, um, you are the best man at a friend's wedding and you're making a presentation or like a funny presentation or something like a goofy presentation, then you can probably use Comic Sans. But in informal context, uh, in non-informal, formal context, never use Comic Sans. It's uh, not ideal. And yeah, do not splash your slides with too many different colors. Just keep it minimal. Keep it uh, very pleasing to the eye by being minimal, by uh, being, uh, you know, less splashy you are again uh, making your audience focus on your content and what you have to say and your points rather than your slides that that makes them less distracted and more focused on your point which is always what you want as a presenter and yeah spend some extra time formatting tables and cleaning up text so if you have tables of data it's always ideal to clean the data of course you all know how what clean data is so it's always better to have clean data and clean text so that you have minimal text there and also also the data is more uh, you know more easy to easy to access for your audience you know that you don't have to speak, do a lot of speaking and explaining yourself that is always better so this is the against the sans serif versus serif difference sans serif is uh, that uh, serif has those you know serifs that's those descenders that uh, sans serif doesn't have and that's the difference so serifs are intended for long sequence of words that exceed one line. They have little feet that guide the letters into each other or the letters appear connected and to help the eye stay within the line of text in a dense copy. Serifs possess varying line weights that help the eye identify the letter quickly. And this is what you see in most 
you know, uh, publish stuff because Serif is the uh, go-to font for publishing in publishing industry. Georgia Times, New Roman Courier are examples. And then the sans serif, the word sans means without, as I've already mentioned. And the letter forms are bigger and bolder. And they're usually used in children's books. And uh, some, you know, they think it's difficult to read. And they're usually only used in short bursts, like headlines or subtitles and captions. Ariel, Tahoma, Century Gothic, Calibri, all of those are, you know, sans serif forms. So, yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, tables and data is always ideal to be presented in clean form instead of in um, instead of in more uh, you know crowded or sort of non and un, un, not cleaned form so the table on the left it, it talks about both tables basically talk about citation information for uh, databases journal databases and uh, it shows the publication here the citation count and everything I on the table on the right and the table on the left both speak about the same thing. But as you can see here, the table on the left uh, is way more tougher to make sense of because there's a publication here. It's it's all over the place. It's not uh, it's not uh, sure. But different formats have been used. There's one that says just says eleven when it when it means two thousand eleven, and there's another that says February twenty two where the where the other places there there's no year that is mentioned so it's always better to make sure that your data is clean and sort of up to date so that the audience or the reader uh, takes more stuff from it is able to uh, easily understand what you're trying to say with the table so that's uh, again of course the best option always is to clean up the data and present it rather than having uh, sort of an unclean data yeah, it's a more clean and organized data table, the other one being an unorganized data table. So death by PowerPoint is an expression that people use when you are doing a PowerPoint based uh, PowerPoint based slide, PowerPoint based presentation. Uh, I'll explain that uh, in a minute. I'll just just hold on a second. So yeah, death by PowerPoint is an expression people use to refer to uh, something that is very common in uh, when people present, they end up making these big long slide decks with a lot of colors, a lot of text, making people very wary of, you know, not the presentation themselves, you don't get the point across and your audience is left confused as to what you're trying to say. And that's the idea of death by PowerPoint, which basically goes on to say these very small simple three things one is don't rely on your slides too much always always your content is king you keep the content and you design the slides on top of that think of it as a foundation the content is a foundation and your slides are sort of the uh, slides are not even the house the slides are just the paint that you you know color your house with that's all it is so the slides are not the most important part your content is the important part don't rely on your slides too much just have it at the back just speak with you know uh, your points don't dump, dump too much data into your slides that's also another ground rule that we've already talked about don't dump too much data don't dump too much text into your slides just keep it minimal and talk more and either ways you only have 10 to 15 minutes so it's not a lot of time that you have at your disposal so it's ideal to you know not have a lot of data in there just keep it minimal keep it simple keep it uh, you know keep it concise the third point is that you know do customize your slides or speech based on your audience's profile that i've already mentioned even if your audience is you know not uh, specialized you have to adjust accordingly if your audience is uh, not even um, you know closely related to your field it's a very very general audience then you have to uh, also of course customize your slides and your speech accordingly you have to sort of come down or go up in your level of uh, in the level of expertise that you give out um, and the slides that you use when you're designing your PowerPoint and designing your presentation. So we'll go on to another sort of recap quiz. So what is wrong with the slide that's given here and how do you correct it? What do you think is wrong with the slide that is given here?
anybody it's uh, so much cluttered and have many points on the same slide so it's a uh, bit difficult to focus on each point so yeah, it would yeah. be better if uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. if we can uh, devise these six points in two slides and something like that yeah 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 wonderful so this is uh, the exact point that we uh, have already touched upon briefly i think we should we can of course as you said you can either sort of make it into different slides or you can just do this you can do use yeah, smart yeah, art yeah. or yeah. something like that and you know make it more easy to access for the audience because as i mentioned already the visual always aids the access for the audience and this is one of the things that you can do and yeah just just remember that no one can remember more than more than three points after all it's it's always better to keep your your ideas concise and precise and uh, convey it in as small a space as possible because you only have the, that much time in most cases so that's the yeah the, and that's the another section that we are heading to the final section that's the delivery uh to when you have any uh, we have i think 15 minutes we'll, i think we'll wrap it up in time do any of you have any questions in the meantime Yeah, I'll take, there is a no. You already have. We you already sort of remember what we have gone through. We have uh, started with the, you know, the elements of a good presentation. We have sort of divided into three: the message or story, the slides or visuals, and the delivery. We have already covered the message or story and the slides or visuals, and now we are on to the delivery part, the message or story. We we saw different scripting methods. We saw how research is key. We saw uh, how time is of the essence, and that we should. Be concise, and that uh, the scripting strategies we mentioned include the prep method, the past, present, future method, the problem, cause, solution method, and the AIDA or attention, interest, uh, desire, action method methods. So these are the four methods. There are this is not an, this is not an exhaustive list. There are more methods that we can use, and one you know you don't you can use multiple methods within this space of a single presentation, but you need to make sure that one or the other is dominant, and you need to be clear about it. Uh, you, you also show also how to design slides, how to make impactful slides, and how to keep it again very uh, less flashy, minimalistic, and with less text on it. So we have covered all of that, and now we are going to the sort of delivery part. Yeah, now the scripts and slides are ready. How will you deliver it? So being calm, composed, and confident does the trick. Because you already, if you have already come this far, you already prepared. You already have your content. You have gone over it, and you have uh, sort of are ready now to go with, go ahead with it. You have the slides, you have the backup, you have everything. Now you can go forward with this. So with pre-presentation, you have one, of course, with all the content that you have, with all the presentation, uh, all the slides and everything that you have already prepared, you can start rehearsing. And rehearsing is ideal with a friend or a colleague or a peer because you know you get feedback from them but even if you don't have uh, someone you know at at hand to uh, get feedback from you can even do it to your mirror or to your pet or who you think you can do uh, the presentation to and sort of rehearse it keep rehearsing it it, it one it sort of uh, you know by repetition things will get more imprinted in your mind in your mind and that helps you when uh, uh, that helps you be more fl fluent in your presentation so keep rehearsing, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse multiple times and check whether the slides and the script are in sync and correct any mistakes on the slide. So if you are using a script, so if you have already prepared a script for your presentation, uh, make sure that uh, you stick by the time that you have and the slides that you have uh, prepared uh, with your con content and the script that you prepared, you know, as a sort of background, those are in sync and those, uh, you know, you have uh, content to stay say for a particular slide and those are in time and those are in sync so correct any mistakes on the slides don't don't have errors on the slides so have your script or outline with you if you have it just print it out or write it down and just keep it and use it if necessary as i said it's a is it sort of device it's a walking stick to fall back on just in case you forget something for example you always have your script or your outline with you or your jotted points or whatever you think uh, helps you you can use that and just keep it with you and just use it if necessary 
and go early definitely if you are presenting somewhere just go early be on time earlier and if it is on the zoom or any other you know google meet or microsoft teams or whichever platform it is just figure out the technical stuff well in advance just make sure that uh, what happened today doesn't happen i was trying to play a video the audio was not uh, working just make sure that you you know figure out the technical stuff well in advance and you know generally go early it, it always helps know where the cameras or audience would be if uh, uh, you know if it's on zoom just just know where you are facing who are you, who you are, how you are facing the camera or if it's an audience and if it's an audience you live audience you need to know where the audience would be and plan to position yourself accordingly and yeah dress well what do you wear makes a ton of difference to how you present even if it is on zoom please wear pants because this is sort of a you know a confidence rule it's not a hard and fast rule it's not like if you can be confident without without you know wearing pants you're wearing a dhoti for example and you're confident with it just go ahead with it but you know dressing formally for a presentation is ideal because it it, it sort of impacts your uh, overall uh, carrying of yourself and that makes a ton of difference to how you present it's it's a confidence factor and yes breathe be calm speak slowly and clearly because uh, as we have already gone over there's a 10 or 15 minutes that you have to present you have the content for it and you have uh, made sure with your script and your outline that you don't overshoot the time so you have enough time you always have that 30 second leeway that you know to uh, fill in if you overshoot a bit so just be- make sure that you are confident and calm and you speak slowly and with clarity that's the most important part and yeah wrap up within time do not extend your speech of course you you have to make sure that you use only that 15 minutes that's given because otherwise it's uh, not ideal for the next speaker also for your audience nobody likes listening to longer stuff and they can listen to smaller stuff so wrap up within time so yeah some small tips for the opening and conclusion in opening you can ask for example a rhetorical question uh, what would a rhetorical question be what do you think anybody yeah so this a, a rhetorical question is something that you ask and you don't expect an answer something like uh, i i don't know what what is the state of the world today for something like that for example or uh, uh some yeah basically some some sort of question that you don't expect an answer to but sort of set an impact set a tone and that's that's the the idea of a rhetorical question so that's uh, the rhetorical question yeah yeah or, or if you don't have a rhetorical question to ask you can state an interesting or attention grabbing fact to begin with because all of this you basically want your audience to be with you you basically want whoever you are presenting to to listen to your presentation with full attention and and these sort of devices these these small sort of slate of hands lets you uh, do 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 exactly that you can either ask a rhetorical question and the audience is involved or you can you know make uh, an interesting observation or straight an interesting attention grabbing fact and the audience would be with you or you can tell a short story or an anecdote um, and that also lets the uh, audience be in, in what you're saying or if you don't have any of these or if you basically know see the first three points that i mentioned the tips that i mentioned it's especially useful when you don't know the audience and the audience doesn't know you uh, if you're if the audience knows you and you know the audience you are in a company of peers or colleagues or friends it's better to you know go ahead with it go go beyond point be straight ahead state the purpose and outline of your presentation that's better so just start in a normal structured way that's that's enough if you already know them or you know them they you know you already so that's one some some of the tips that we can give for the opening and for the conclusion it's always better to give a summary before you conclude just go over what whatever we have already mentioned and then so sort of restate what were the major points that i've already as i've already done before you know multiple sections i have all i've always went back and gave all the re- restated all the major points and gave a sort of summary gave a 
sort of recap of what we are doing until then. And then if there's a call for action, you have to state the call for action at the conclusion. Sort of restate it if you have already mentioned it so that the audience remembers what you're saying, what is your main point. And yeah, you have to, it's, it's good to have an exit line, sort of end your presentation on a punch line. If you're doing a presentation on, on a certain topic, it's always good to have a punch line. Uh, that helps you even in sort of public speaking. So a punchline or sort of an exit line to conclude your overall presentation is always good. And yes, post presentation, when you're done with the presentation, ask for questions. Um, if you can have that uh, particular, you know, do you have any questions in, in the thank you slide itself? So ask for questions, questions and take your time to process the questions. So break them down into chunks if necessary. If, if you know, if you are doing a presentation on some technical subject and you get a very long question, uh, make sure that you process it, either write it down or take notes of it and then break them down into chunks. If it's a large question, break them down into chunks and answer each part satisfactorily and respond, don't react. You have to be calculated in your response. You, have, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't let your emotions take over you. They might be provocative questions uh, and so on. Don't get provoked. They might be provocative questions after the presentation. Uh, if you're especially in research settings and in academic settings and uh, you know, even in business settings, there might be provocative questions, but always respond. Never react or never let your emotion cloud your judgment, your reason. So, and if you don't know the answer, of course, say so. You, it's 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 always possible to say I don't know the answer. It's it's not a sin to not know the answer and don't get provoked. These are you know some of the post presentation tips that we can give you. And yeah, the main takeaways. It's sort of summary that we can give you from here is that preparation is key. As we have repeatedly mentioned, preparation is key. And no one, not even the most accomplished orators can get away with the lack of preparation. Nobody uh, should be getting away with a lack of preparation. Nobody will get away with the lack of preparation. Even people who say they are very casual about things, even they would have prepared a bit before coming to uh, a certain you know, presentation or a certain speech. Even the most accomplished orators, they they can't get away with the lack of preparation so be prepared uh, make sure that you have your points in place your your slides or your visuals in place your data in place be prepared you don't have to be a great designer to create great slides as we've already mentioned this is the part on the slides or the visuals you only need where to you only need to know where to look as we've already mentioned there are templates online there are templates in the powerpoint and you can just use them nobody is stopping you they are public access and yeah, minimalism in both time and design wins. So crisp and clear presentations always gain a lot more interest than long drawn out ones. Because as I've said, people's attention spans are very low. It's always better to keep your message concise and precise and, you know, crisp and, and be clear about what you want to say. Your message should be clear and that may, gains a lot more interest and traction than longer presentations. So as I've uh, repeatedly mentioned on the message of the story part, preparation is key. On the slides or visuals part, you don't have to be a great designer to create slides, great slides. You just need to know where you look. And on the delivery and the slides part again, minimalism always wins. Just be uh, precise, just be concise, and just be confidently and clearly. So we, I don't think we have time for this. This is for, you know, if you have to give a small two-minute argumentative speech or a short presentation or a paper on a debatable topic, you can use these, um, you know, sort of tips. You know, a typical slide template doesn't really work in this particular place because it's only two minutes, not 10 or 15 minutes. You you, you only use time as of the essence. You have to basically state your position on something. This That's a two minute speech, two minute argumentative speech that we are talking about. Time is of the essence here. So we have, you can use, follow this very basic structure, very fast structure that is introduction. And you stand on the argument or the main statement, you state the main statement immediately and you elaborate the key points that you introduce in the main body itself. And then uh, you cite uh, your reasons to back your stand and a few potential counter arguments that can arise. Of course, you have to also mention what can come against what you're saying. And then you have to refute these counter arguments because you are stating this position and you need to be strongly on the side of whatever position you're taking on. And with, uh, of course, you refute them with valid reasons. And then again, you reiterate your original argument, which is your position on a certain topic. And then you conclude 
by restating the same. So this is the sort of format for two minute argumentative speech. There are some two minute debate propositions that we won't go to here. These are just topics that you have. You can use them and use them to, you know, talk about two minute speeches here. We don't have the time or otherwise you could have done this as an activity in the class. But yeah, there's also another activity that we're trying to think of doing, but then we don't have the time for it. So we'll just wrap this up. We'll uh, I'll send the slides over. So all just remember that a great presentation gives smart ideas an advantage. So it doesn't uh, doesn't just you know having smart ideas by themselves is not enough. It's always better to have a great presentation to expose them to bring it out to the world because it gives the smart ideas an advantage. If you know how to present something well, uh, to pitch something well, it, it makes sure that your ideas get across to where it should be reaching so you know you i think i hope you all do great presentations with the tips that i was able to give we were able to give and we'll follow up with the sessions on group discussion and thank you thanks for bearing with me i think uh, we are sort of right on time if any of you have any questions you can ask them now of course i'll send over the slides in the mailing list yeah no questions okay kalyani thanks for coming thank you prajali thank you ravi Yeah, I think that's that's from that's from you, all of you. Okay. Um. Yep. Have a good evening, good night, and uh, see you for the next class. I will. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll end the presentation now. You you will receive the slides in your emails. Thank you. Bye, yeah, yes.